Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 5 and continuing with the next topic which is 5.2 using checklist and reviews. So as a part of this section we would like to recall the information from the previous tutorial that what exactly a checklist is all about. In fact we have discussed this in the foundation level syllabus to understand more about checklist. Checklist is something which generally contains a list of questions or probably instructions which you should address while reviewing a particular work product. And this plays a very vital role when it comes to specifically for product based organizations because your product remains the same and probably there is a list of questions which you can actually answer about any particular work product which you have prepared as a part of your development process or testing life cycle and anywhere such document which will be further reused in order to derive your test cases or mark the quality of the product. So yes, checklist plays a very much important and vital role in reviewing such work products because it can be very straightforward to the point and also gives you that output which you desire to have at the end of reviews. So checklist is very much recommended in formal types of review and if you have one, you make use of it. If you do not have one, prefer having one for your project. The second thing is to understand that what kind of checklist contribution you can have. So generally the checklist is very helpful uh, and derived for projects and different organizations. So the checklist may vary from organization to organization or within organization it may vary from different project to another project. And it's very important for the technical test analyst here to contribute in order to make the checklist more effective by sharing the experience or sharing the concerns which you generally have as a part of the overall process from the quality characteristics of the product. So that's really important to uh, have a good set of instruction included as a part of your checklist in order to make your review more successful in, in order to meet the expectation and the goals of the review process. So let's talk a little more ahead of that and today we are getting into the second part of this tutorial. So of course uh, we are talking about how reviews can be created. So generally a checklist uh, is helpful in review and it can be created by having certain protocols. So the first and foremost thing is your past experience and generally what type of typical defects, typical challenges or you know any kind of pattern which you observe during the process you can include that in form of questionnaire as a part of your checklist. So when I talk about questionnaire it generally means that it includes a statement like questions which you need to answer while you are evaluating or going through the documentation or work product which you are reviewing. So you just make sure that if this requirement is testable, if this requirement is complete, if this path is defined or the calling structure is clearly identified. So we just have a set of all questions as a part of checklist and generally you try to answer them in yes or no. So if you have a no at any point of time is what you generally call it as an anomaly in the work product and put it back to the organization in order to understand and resolve that issue. In fact, that will be also reported to the author who has written that and will be very precise and highly accurate in order to fix the issues. Additionally, the ISTQB includes that the most useful checklists are those which are gradually developed by an individual organization and also can reflect or may include the nature of the product, what kind of product is additional information which you can include and the local development environment like staff, tool and priorities which you generally have within your organization, what kind of team size you have, what kind of team skill set you have, what kind of tools you make use of and what kind of priorities you generally consider. History of the previous successes and defects like how this checklist has helped you to identify a lot of uh, defects and help you to succeed in your process. Additionally, particular issues, if you think there's something specific you know, which generally happens as a part of the process, you may include that during this uh, checklist creation. Additionally, checklist should be customized as per the organization that we know that, so it will be different depending on the organization standards or project's characteristics. Some organizations extend the usual notion of a software checklist to include anti-patterns. Now what do you anti-pattern means? One is the pattern of course and this is going to be a checklist which acts like an anti-pattern. 
So you have a pattern that every time you execute a project, you find a lot of defects in the code or you generally find a lot of defects which are originated during design phase. So it becomes a pattern for us that no matter what type of product we are making, what type of uh, process we are dealing with, we always have issues with design. So we create the checklist in order to address those areas and we can call our checklist as anti-patterns where this anti-pattern will act like a coverage on those specific areas which you generally find a lot of issues about. So that will help you a lot in order to optimize your review process. And a little more on what anti-pattern terms come from is from a mechanical or industrial uh, engineering concept which says design pattern. So generally the design pattern means that when you create a design and you generally go wrong with certain dimensions or maybe angles or particular orientation issues, then we generally call it as design pattern, which is like always a pattern throughout. So you follow that. So you try to overcome that by using anti-patterns to overcome those challenges. As a part of it, we also want to discuss uh, architectural review in more detail. And here we will be understanding that what kind of checklist or what kind of uh, area of concentration can be observed when it comes to architectural review, which is quite specific to design. So generally, uh, the issue after requirement phase starts uh, coming into the project is from design. So software architecture consists of the fundamental organization of the system embodied in its component the relationship to each other and environment so as you see that most of the important thing lies right at the design be it your state transition diagrams use case diagrams or maybe the control flows data flow graphs cause effect graph so there are a lot of things which can be derived right from the architecture or there are a lot of such work product which we rely on in order to derive our test cases thus architectural reviews plays a vital role and has to have a good information and understanding of these architectural patterns in order to overcome them with help of your checklist. Checklists used for architectural review could, for example, include verification of the proper implementation of the following items, which are quoted from, one, connection pooling, which means reducing the execution time overhead associated with establishing the database connection by establishing a shared pool of connection. So we do have a lot of web services working within uh, between the front end and the back end and we have a lot of such connectivity issues generally which we find and sometimes the search query is not responded with the right outcomes or may take a little longer. So we try to address those areas which could be quite important for us. Load balancing, spreading the load evenly between the set of resources which is from the performance point of view can be addressed during architectural review itself. Distributed processing, caching, using a local copy of data to reduce access time so you do have your cache memory and has all the information there so we trigger those uh, memories to utilize lazy instantiation you know instant creation will be taking a lot of time so why don't you overcome that transaction concurrencies number of concurrent users working at any point of time on the particular transaction process isolation between online transactional processing that is OLTP and online analytical processing that is OLAP so OLTP and OLAP is one of the thing to be taken care of and replication of data which is another important thing to be considered as a part of architectural review so yes architectural review plays a very vital role when finding anomalies at a very beginning phase resulting in cheaper to fix the issues and TTA plays a very vital role at this point of time so that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. We'll be getting back to you with second part of this tutorial. Stay tuned for that and happy learning.